Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to extract spectral signatures using the SCP plugin in QGIS. So here's a list of where we're headed. Uh, load the SCP, create a band set, create a training layer, create temporary ROIs, make them permanent, compute and plot the spectra, and export to Excel. So if that sounds like a good plan, uh, then stick with us. So if you don't know much about spectral reflectance signatures, uh, please see some of these videos, Basics of Landsat, Basics of Spectral Signatures, and ultimately Spectral Mixing. That'll really help you. So in this video, we're going to focus on algal blooms. Um, these are a uh, big problem in freshwater lakes. You get nutrient runoff. It fuels these algal blooms. They cause anoxia and other problems, and they kill fish and lots of problems. Remote sensing is a great way to monitor these over large areas and also with good temporal frequency by satellite imagery. So in this video, what we're going to do is actually extract the reflectance spectra of clear water, something like this blue line. And we're also going to extract the reflectance spectra of water with a lot of algae, of which phytoplankton is, is part of that. And that's going to be this blue line, this light blue line. So again, reflectance spectra, what it is, what they are, is um, basically a graph like this that shows you the percent of light reflected by some surface type at any given wavelength. Okay, So clear water you know, tends to reflect about 15% uh, in the green, for example. Water with phytoplankton only reflects about 5%. But you can see that phytoplankton actually is peaked in the green, right? It absorbs blue, it absorbs red pretty well, it reflects more in the green, that's why it looks green. And notice that each of these materials has a unique reflectance spectra. So these are like fingerprints that can ultimately let us identify and diagnose different surface materials. And so in this video, we're going to extract the spectra for clear water, a spectra for, for uh, algal blooms, and then we're going to use those as end members, mixing end members, to figure out the percentage of algal bloom in uh, waters where we, we don't know. Okay, so let's jump right into this. Uh, what we've got here is a uh, 1999 Landsat image. Here it's rendered as a true color RGB. Um, here's Lake Champlain in the middle. In the last video, we computed uh, a bunch of reflectance rasters. Those are shown here. So here's band 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7. Um, these are not, not digital numbers. These are now reflectance values. Notice they range from 0 to 1. Again, the, each pixel now is the percentage of light in that wavelength that's reflected uh, from zero, as a fraction from 0 to 1. OK, so in this video, what we want to do is actually extract the signatures of different surface types. So the first thing to do is going to be to open up the SCP plugin. If you haven't installed it yet, you, need, you may need to go to Manage and Install. Once you have done that, you'll find the SCP menu bar here. I usually go straight to Show Plugin. And um, you'll need to define a band set. If you were with us in the last video, you've essentially already done that. In the last video, we kind of created this band set by feeding uh, Landsat layers into the pre-processing screen. But you can also create a band set directly by choosing or adding individual Landsat or any satellite layers um, into here. And you should be see your layers in band set 1. You can actually move them around, up and down, if you want to. So once you've got a band set, that's good. That's, that has the data that we're going to extract. OK, so next we're going to go to um, over here. And we're going to go to uh, this tab, Training Input. So here's Home. Here's Training Input. And we're going to actually go and create, uh, or I guess we're going to create a new Training Input right here. This is basically going to be a shape file. And I'm going to put it up here in the for me and my students, put it in your tutorial output. Um, and so we'll call it uh, LC for Lake Champlain, algae, uh, I have it, we'll just call it spectra. 
Okay, so there's that. So we've basically created now this uh, shape file. It's been added to our layers list. So now let's populate this with some end member reflectance spectra. So I'm going to go now to Lake Champlain. Why don't we start with some nice clear blue water? Let's go right to the middle of Lake Champlain where there really shouldn't be too much of an algal bloom happening. And we're going to uh, create what's called an ROI or a region of interest. So what's going to happen here, I'm going to draw a polygon and then QGIS is going to take all the pixels within that polygon and it's going to average them. And it's going to create an average reflectance of all the pixels for band one, for band two, for band three. So let's do that. All right, so I'm going to click up here on this is the ROI definition tool. In this case, I'm going to make it pretty large because I want to have a lot of pixels contributing to this mean reflectance, okay? So I'm left clicking. Then to finish the circle, I'm going to right click. So there it is. So that's my region of interest. So at this point, we've created a temporary region of interest. And before we make this permanent, we can come over here and we can actually adjust some of these parameters that are going to go into the, the training input shape file. So for example, we'll leave the ID number as one, but here's some info. And I'm just going to call this um, pure water, OK? And we can leave the CID as one and the C info as one. And then I'm going to uh, click this button, save the temporary ROI to the training output. OK, so what that did now, it added it to our list right here. But also, if you go up and you right click up here, it actually added it as a uh, feature in our polygon shape file. OK, so that's great. So why don't we get a second one that is pure water. Let's go down here a little bit. So again, I'm just going to repeat that. Click on the temporary ROI definition. I'm left clicking a nice big region, right clicking to finish. Um, and then I'm, now I'm going to actually, uh, this MC, which stands for macro class, um, is still going to be 1. And that's going to be the identifier for pure water. And now its uh, class ID is now 2. So it's the, kind of the second feature within water. Um, and so we're just going to leave those blank for now. But you can actually have, this lets you do multiple levels of classes, a macro class in a regular class. So I'm going to make that permanent. OK, so now let's go find some algal blooms. And if we go down towards Middlebury, the lake gets really narrow. We see a lot of agriculture starting to pop up. And we're going to go all the way down here. This is the Champlain Bridge. And there's a couple little creeks here. Hospital Creek, I believe this is called. Look how bright green it is. It's suffering very badly from algae. So we're going to go ahead and assume that that is um, uh, pure algae. Again, we're going to grab this. Um, so I'm going to trace this, being a little careful not to try to grab pixels that are actually on shore. And I do want to get as many pixels as I can, but I want to make sure that they really are mostly algal bloom. So I'll right click. And now I'm going to call this actually macro class 2. And we're going to call this pure algae. And we'll let it be uh, a third. Yeah, we'll leave those blank. OK, and then I'm going to go get just one more of those pure algaes. We're going to do this little contaminated river here, too. Again, back to the ROI temporary delineator. Again, keeping it kind of uh, narrow so I don't accidentally grab pixels that are uh, actually on land, right click to finish. And again, this is going to be macro class 2, pure algae descriptor. And we'll add that. OK. And then the last thing I'm going to do is go to the very north part. So those are my two end members, uh, pure water and pure algae. Now I'm going to go up here all the way to Missisquoi Bay, where there's some questionable uh, incipient algal blooms that maybe we want to understand 
what percentage of algae they are. Perhaps you can see some of these greenish colors in here. So just for example, I'm now going to go right here where I see an incipient algae bloom. I'm going to make another temporary ROI, grab it there, right click it to finish. So this is going to be macro class 3. It's going to, I'm just going to call it unknown, and I'm going to add it. And then I will uh, do the same over here. Make one more and just call it unknown. OK. Macro class 3, unknown. OK. So now we've got two pure water, two pure algae, and two unknowns. So one cool thing we can do if we want is actually combine these two ROIs. Because I probably only need one end member spectra for water. So what I can actually do is, um, remember, pure water is this class number one, macro class one. So I can go hold down Shift, highlight both of those. Then I can go to this button, Merge the Highlighted Spectral Signatures. So I'll click that, click Yes. And it's going to merge those spectra. And it's actually now created a new one down here, a new merged. So we'll keep track of that. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my pure algaes. I'm going to highlight them both, hold down Shift, click Merge the highlighted signatures. It's going to take a second. It's going to create another entry down here. So now I have my merged pure water and merged pure algae. So now I'm going to hold down uh, Shift. I'm going to collect, I'm going to highlight all of these. Uh, my two unknowns, which are class threes, my merged pure water, and my merged pure algae, number two. Well, what I'm going to do is actually go to this button, Calculate Signatures for Highlighted Items. So that's what that's going to do is now going to average all those pixels and average the reflectance in each spectral band. Um, and create an average spectral signature for each of those things. Great, so it's done that. Now I'm going to highlight them again. And I'm going to go Add to Spectral Signature Plot here. So here's what we've got. We've added four things to the Spectral Signature Plot, OK? Um, the two unknowns, which are Macro Class ID 3 the merged pure water and the merged pure algae. So here is the data. This is in table form. Um, and you can see it's kind of flagged by color. So here's our first unknown. Um, it consists of 967 pixels. And um, you can see that here's the six spectral bands that were in our band set. This is band one, two, three, four, five, and seven. These are the center wavelengths in uh, microns. So 2.22 microns, that's in, out in the infrared. Here's the blue band at 0 0.485. OK, so that's essentially going to be the x-axis of a spectral reflectance plot. And then here are the mean reflectance values for each of those bands. So again, it averaged all 967 pixels. And the mean. Uh, Blue reflectance is basically 9% here for that. OK, so that's the mean stats for your our first unknown. Here green is our second unknown. Then down here red is our merged pure water, which actually has 10,000 pixels, so quite a bit more in it. And then here down in yellow is our uh, merged pure algae which only has 113 pixels. Remember, it was that very narrow little swamp I was tracing. And also, I forgot to mention your standard deviations are here. So those might be error bars on a reflectance plot. OK, so let's see if we can actually get a plot now. So here's the plot. This big gold line is the pure algae. Um, and then the pure water is this red line right here. And bracketed in between the red line and the gold line are the uh, two unknowns. 
the light green and the light blue here, which makes sense, right? Those unknowns have a little bit of algae, but they're not like pure algae the same way this was. So there's a visual representation of the spectra. And the final thing we're going to do in this uh, class, we are going to be exporting these spectra into Excel to actually do some spectral mixing calculations. And so I haven't, the, there is an export button down here, which I have not been able to get to work. So I actually am just exporting these the, the lame way by just literally uh, left clicking over here and just highlighting control C to copy. And then I'll open up Excel and um, right click, paste. And actually, it's a nice, clean paste. So, um, And then you can work with those in Excel. Hey, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, see you in class.